talk about the law of definite proportions. So the law of definite proportions just says that if you have a sample of a chemical compound, now that compound could be something you're familiar with, like carbon dioxide. If you have a sample of carbon dioxide anywhere on Earth, regardless of how big it is, you could have one gram of carbon dioxide or you could have a hundred tons of carbon dioxide. And the mass of each element in that compound is always going to be found in the same proportion. That is to say, the carbon dioxide anywhere on Earth in any amount is always going to be made of 27% carbon and 73% oxygen. That is the law of definite proportions and it's one of the very important attributes of matter that was used to actually prove the existence of the atom. Okay, I'm going to show you some different examples of carbon dioxide. And what I want you to know is that even though each of these samples is different and the source of carbon dioxide will be different for each one, every single one of them, if we were to take them out and perform what's called elemental analysis on the carbon dioxide, and uh, we would find that every single one contains 27% carbon by mass and 73% oxygen. Even though they're going to exist in different amounts, even though they are from different sources, the mass percentage is always the same. That is the law of definite proportions. So I have in here uh, an indicator that will actually indicate for the presence of carbon dioxide. You can see that um, it's pink right now. Uh, when carbon dioxide enters in, it actually um, gets converted to something called carbonic acid, which will change the color of the indicator. So I'm going to drop this dry ice, which is carbon dioxide, into here. And you can see that almost immediately it turns yellow, okay? Now, you probably learned back in elementary school that when you breathe, you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. That's a little bit of an oversimplification, but certainly when you breathe out, you breathe out air that is enriched in carbon dioxide. And so I'm gonna see if I can accomplish the same thing that we did here with my own breath. Okay, we did it. So there's yet another sample of carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide would be 27% carbon and 73% oxygen, even though this one came from my breath and this one came from dry ice. Here I've just got a couple of uh, um, antacid tablets, and I'm going to drop them in here, and that carbon dioxide is actually bound up in those tablets. It's now being released in a chemical reaction, and so those are carbon dioxide bubbles, and they also contain 27% carbon and 73% oxygen by mass. Now, I've got one more sample here. This is um, just some, uh, some fuel that I put in here uh, into this bottle. And I'm just gonna kind of rotate this around a little bit to kind of get the fuel into the gas phase. We're gonna carry out a little combustion reaction right now. And one of the products of combustion is carbon dioxide. And so the carbon dioxide that is gonna be produced in this combustion reaction has the same mass percentage of carbon and oxygen as this one, as this one, as this one. They are all the same according to the law of definite proportions. <clears throat> I'm just gonna move this out of the way, put this here, and we're gonna now produce some more carbon dioxide. There we go, you heard that whooshing sound, and that was the formation of a huge amount of carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide, 27% carbon, 73% oxygen by mass. That is the law of definite proportions.